Just the uncanny. It is so uncanny. Informed fields that are acted on, they'll last for a long time. But when quantum collapse occurs, they manifest in your reality instantly. That's what quantum collapse is. We create informed fields every single day, every moment of every day. And we create multiple timelines, fractured timelines, and reality tunnels every single day. This is why every single moment of our existence is pregnant with possibility. You feel this when you get out of your car and you walk into a supermarket. You feel it. It's on the edge of your mind that something different could happen this time while you walk down the aisles. You may see someone or, or experience something different. But there's always that nagging that you've done this 2,000 times before in your life and nothing's ever going to change. When that depression that sits in, that monotony sits in, that reality, that reality tunnel is reinforced. Quantum collapse has happened to, for you so many times and there's been no change that it continues that. It's called stasis. Stasis is exactly where the simulacrum tries to drive everyone because it requires more energy output to try to figure out what an immortal is trying to do within it than it does guiding the hive-minded, guiding the collective. This is why those of us who are thinkers, those of us who are doers live totally different dynamic lives than the rest of us, those around us. The simulacrum is always knitting new and interesting experiences trying to corral us into some type of definable existence. One that can be controlled or anticipated. Remember, I have a video called Breaking Pattern. I'm giving you the secret in that video of what you have to do. It doesn't matter what your life is. Remember, the selfless act of an instant can undo an entire lifetime of guilt. The reason is, not because the, the one selfless act is so selfless that it undo, undoes a whole lifetime of evil. That's not what's happening here. We're dealing with informed fields. That's what we're dealing with. If a person has done bad all their life, at the very end of their life, if they just make a conscious, conscious decision, hey man, you know what? This didn't work out for me. I was a piece of shit. I was no good. I hurt all these people. I have not done anything in my life. That admission, if it is genuine, if it is sincere and not predicated on a fear of what's going to happen on in the afterlife, believe me, deathbed conversions are real. But the only deathbed conversions are real are those where the individual isn't worried about the consequences of what's going to happen on the other side. They're genuinely distressed about the life they've lived. In those situations, one person can create an informed field, emotionally charged, so powerful that they, yes, they can undo an entire life, lifetime of guilt. Now, I, doesn't, I don't know... I don't know what that, do, what that does for them on the other side, but I'm not a religionist anymore. So I don't believe that this grand scale exists that's gonna, that, that weighs, uh, that way I don't believe that, I don't believe that the true oversoul measures people by the amount of bad and good. I just don't see that. To me that is very, it is very adolescent. It is very immature way of looking at true spirituality. Because I believe with true spirituality, we have to tread through dark places to find the light. And in treading through those dark places, I believe the Overstall, Oversoul has taken into consideration that we're going to adopt the language of that darkness as we make that journey. If I'm going to cross the river Styx, I have to talk. I have to talk to the ferryman, Death, in a language that he will understand in order for me to get to the other side. I don't believe the Oversoul is the religionous concept that has, been, that has been foisted upon me all of my life. I'm through believing that. My life is not unfolded in that way. And as a Southern Baptist Christian all my life, I know for a fact that that did not work for me. Prayer and fasting and I now know the truth. And the truth for me as an immortal individual is that the prayer of desperation 
will always create an informed field that will perpetuate whatever is being prayed against. That's powerful. That is dynamic and it is dangerous. And it tells me that the church is an enemy because they promote that. And over and over in my life I have seen that the prayer of desperation only continues what people are being desperate about. I have never seen otherwise. What I have seen are people who have been fed up and decided, you know what, I'm done. I'm done with that. I'm going to do things my way. I'm going to do things my way, cuss God out. I've seen this. I've done it myself. Believe me, I have called God everything but a child of God. I have gone off. I have been in a prison cell, and I've raged, and I just poured my heart out, heart out to God, and I'm telling you now, it wasn't a prayer. I could not say the things on YouTube that I said to God. And after that, I felt such a cleansing. I felt such a closeness with the Oversoul. I felt things that I had never felt when I was a Christian. I know that God is so, so vast that 10,000 different opinions about him can all be right and not one of them be contrary to another. We're talking about something that is undefinable, an oversoul that has created a universe that is so beautiful and so perfect that it requires us to live through a series of false universes in order, in order for us to to build the architecture of our eternal personalities before we're given the chance to enter it. This is the God that I have come to realize. As a student of the Gnosis, I realize that God is unknown inside the construct. And that is why inside this construct, we only approach the idea of the Oversoul through parables, through similes, never directly. The greatest teachings are in parables, because parables are images of truth. They're not the truth. They're copies of it, just like the simulacrum is a copy of, our, of a real universe, one that we yet cannot attain. But we're building our personalities in order to basically be admitted into that citizenship, because the oversoul is patient. does not matter how much you have done while you treaded through the swamps of darkness of this life because it understands that in going through the garbage you're going to collect a lot of it this is why in eschatology there is fires of purification that's not to burn you up into hellfire that's to burn away all the dross that the simulacrum is attached to you because the oversoul is understanding and it knows in order for you to trek through a jungle, you're going to get dirty. It's as simple as that. And while you're doing it, though, you have great latitude, great latitude to decide your own fate in the personal, no matter what the collective is going through.